excited for uh, our visiting artists here. My name is Matt Clark, and I'm co-chair of the Visiting Artists Committee. And what we do is we uh, meet a few times a year and locate great artists like Sayad to invite them to come speak and share their insights, experiences, and wisdom with you guys. So I hope that you guys are as excited as I am to uh, hear what Sayad has to offer and share. But I'm going to have my colleague, Lily Kudelia, uh, introduce Sayad. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here with you today to introduce Seat Kazanshu, who comes to us from uh, Tirana, the capital of Albania, via New York. He's currently doing a residency in New York at Residency Unlimited as the winner of a uh, 2022 RG Award for a Contemporary Albanian Artist. So we're about to hear brilliant stories from you, Seat, that highlight Seat's multidisciplinary practice, his heritage, and his various roles, because he's not only an artist, right? For many years, he now has been the board member of the European Roma Institute for Art and Culture, ARIAC. He is also a deputy chairman of the State Committee for National Minorities in Albania, uh, where he recently founded an art space called Parking Art Gallery, which he runs. Uh, Sead's work was featured in numerous personal and group exhibitions. Most recently, it was Documenta 15 in Kassel, Manifesta 14 Biennial, and previously it was the Second Roma Biennale, Autostrada Biennale in Kosovo, Tirana Institute of Contemporary Art, Zeta Gallery in Albania, European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture in Berlin, the Central Slovak Gallery, Mediterranean 18th Young, Young Artist Biennale in Albania, among others. Uh, I learned yesterday that Seat's first group show actually happened in, uh, New, was Orleans. in New Orleans mm. when he was still a student. That was a nice time. But I was not present. But you omitted from your CV, right? But <laughs> so to me, your work is very inspiring because it's an example of how art can be you know, a tool for the feeling of dignity and empowerment. And your installations, as we will see, often start with the facade, but then they move like, deep into the body of the institution. Uh, raising awareness about such aspects of social interaction as access, privilege, exclusion, uh, and the importance of showing up and increasing your visibility and uh, advocating for your community. Uh, we will open up the discussion uh, to your questions after Seat's presentation, so please uh, keep them, uh, keep any comments and ideas uh, as we speak today. Additionally, I would like to say huge thanks to uh, our colleagues at UTA Central Library, uh, Andy Castillo, Morgan Rose, Brittany Jones, Morgan Cheevers, Andrew Branca, all of them who helped uh, to build together a lead guide on the library website. Uh, this web page features books, articles, and media resources that Seat kindly recommended. And I hope that later after this talk, if you haven't done so yet, you will peruse these resources to delve deeper into um, you know, literature that inspires Seat in his practice, um, more facts about the history of Roma people in particular, as well as his recent publications that are also featured on the lead guides. I want to say huge thanks to the Matt production team who helped us with the broadcast today and say hello to the audience who's tuning in via YouTube. And on this note, uh, on behalf of the Visiting Artists Committee and all of us at the Art and Art History Department, Seat, thank you so much. Uh, for coming to UT Arlington and sharing your stories with us. On to Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I'm very honored to be here, and I wanted to thank uh, the University of Arlington uh, for the invitation, and also Lilia, uh, that we made this possible to come and to talk uh, uh, about my practice, which I, th I think it's uh, unique because I don't think you hear every day about uh, a Roma artist uh, and their practice and, and their activism. As Lydia, Lilia actually made a very good presentation about myself. Uh, I actually, I'm an artist, uh, Roma artist, and, uh, but I have also like uh, some vice chair positions in institutions uh, because this is also related to my artistical practice in the fight of, uh, uh, to, for the being part of decision making. I'm vice uh, chair of the board of the European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture, but I was also appointed two, two years ago, appointed by the Prime Minister of Albania as a vice chair of the State Committee on National Minorities, uh, which is like made me also to, to see the things differently. Uh, 
actually I wanted to give a little bit background about about who are the Romani people and why we call ourselves uh, the Romani people are like uh, the Indian diaspora but they have left India a thousand years ago and came to Europe and Balkan and spread all over the world and the, the term Roma it was uh, because we all well, were uh, want to call ourselves Roma but we were identified in many countries with many different uh, pejorative uh, names like Gypsy, Tsigan and so on and in London in 71 uh, there were uh, Roma intellectuals and activists where they organized the first World Romani Congress and they talk about in this Congress about the standardization of the Romani language. Uh, they put the seals of, uh, of the Romani people which is the flag that is the, the sky, the blue sky, the green, the, the, the grass like the symbolizes the earth and in the middle there is the wheel, the chakra, the red wheel. Um, that's why uh, still that time we, we call ourselves uh, uh, like Roma because this was our will not be identified by uh, the pejorative uh, uh, terminology because I strongly believe and I always say we are slaves of the image and that was about us. the perception about us it was made based on the image not like to know us uh, uh, like inside. Uh, we are talking about the role of artists in the process of decision making the community involvement, because in my work is uh, I have uh, by practice always uh, community involvement when I do these interactions, and actually we were represented all uh, by outsider perspective. There has been a lot of cultural appropriation, where I spoke also like uh, openly in, uh, uh, about this issue, and this time I'm going to talk about cultural appropriation, but also like self self representation. And uh, the other thing is that we, uh, the, we will talk about the fight for being part of decision-making processes. As I said in the beginning, I'm uh, the highest position that we Roma in Albania have, which is the, the, the vice chair. We are not represented in the public administration. We, we can count maximum to people that can work in different like, levels in the, in the government. And, uh, being part of the decision-making process, so you fight to, to, to be part of it, and then what happens when you are inside the decision-making process? But we start. Uh, we start with the, the first, uh, uh, one of the first interventions I did in Albania. Uh, it was on the, on the occasion of the first, uh, the, the, the World Romani Day. Uh, uh, 8th of April, and I call this installation 8 for 8th of April, but because of the simple uh, reason there were eight big tractor wheels that I invited my friends who are artists uh, to, uh, to, 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 to work with me and uh, some community members uh, to work with me and to make uh, paint these, uh, uh, these wheels uh, in the colors of the Roman installed in front to block the entrance of the Albanian parliament. Because there is, uh, I, I come from the civil society, and uh, we have always like uh, try to, to negotiate, to be part of uh, uh, of decision making processes and so on. So, uh, like very difficult. The questions comes about education and, and, and so on. So this time I decided to 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 uh, to, to do an action. We are visible in everyday life, but we are visible in an exotic way. So. Using this kind of interaction that it's not anymore human resources to protest and to talk about certain issues, but using art and to, uh, uh, to, to, to make this kind of communication with the, with the system, with the institution. And this is not like a very common way of reaction, uh, especially when I think about Roma minority. Because when they're the first thing uh, uh, that they think about the, this community is always the exotic way of thinking and not this kind of approach. So, but at that day, uh, I had also like some very interesting visitors to shuttle buses with the police came and to, uh, to because I was blocking the entrance of the Albanian parliament. So they had to remove the wheels, but something good happened because uh, me and uh, my other friend who were artists were trying to the police 
the, the, the letter until I get a media pronunciation. <laughs> so we did this very and after that, they even helped me to move them in this, uh, uh, in this place where people could walk through the installation and feel it uh, more. So we moved it from the entrance of the Albanian parliament and then to this, uh, uh, this, this, this place. By coincidence, by coincidence, if you see carefully, it's like there is written good year, but that is the mark of the, of the, the wheels. So it was not by, but I just, I saw it there, the work responded to me and I, I strengthened this because for me, this is like marks like good year of the Roma activism uh, in, in, in Albania uh, when it comes to, uh, the, to the movement, to the representation in the, in the, like in the local elections and so on, because after that year they started somehow to involve in the, in the, in the election, the people from the Roma minority. Continuing the same culture uh, uh, when it comes to this public intervention, you will see a lot of uh, public intervention inside and out uh, uh, institutions. Uh, this is one of the projects uh, that I, 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 I like uh, because we Romani people have seen always as a nomadic. But I come from a group which is the uh, Mechkar group, it's the agricultural Roma, who are like, since they moved in Albania, they were settled in one place and they work with the land. And we were somehow also, the, the metaphor of the swallows was used always uh, to, to identify us because the swallows come only in the summer and then in the winter they go, they build a nest in your house and like this. Uh, but for me, I use the swallow's nest uh, as a metaphor uh, to talk about cultures that are not part of public institutions. Although we have like thousand years like uh, uh, that we are in Europe, like uh, in Albania, for example, like more than seven, uh, 700 years, uh, we are still cannot find something about ourselves in the National Museum. Uh, I tried when I was a student in a, in a high school with some NGOs to, to make like a small corners uh, exhibition that represents our culture, but still that was not like officially done to create this kind of corner. So that's why I take this, uh, uh, the swallows for me, the nest is not just a nest that a small object, but it's an institution by itself. And uh, I, I, I make this, I, I do it a giant one. Uh, and I install it for the first time in the facade of Frid uh, Frid uh, uh, Albanian Museum. Uh, it's, in Albania, it's not a, like a big issue to talk about coloniality and decolonialization. So it's like normal. And also it was very easy to, uh, to negotiate with the, the Minister of Cultures to, uh, to install this work uh, uh, there. Because in other countries, I had some, some uh, like rejections about this installation. So we installed it there, but, but inside the museum was still nothing about our culture. So the, the, the voices, the, the question that I was raising uh, on the facade of Albanian uh, Museum, it was responded later in Documenta 15. Because I got an invitation uh, at uh, Documenta 15 in uh, 2022, uh, and, um, where uh, they actually proposed to me to make another project about playground. It was invitation, because Documenta 15, uh, it was, this time it was totally different. A lot of artists were, because of the concept of the, also of the curator from Grupa, they created different sessions and invited also other institutions like, uh, like of Biennale Budapest in collaboration with ARIAC, European Roma Institute, uh, they created this uh, 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 concept about uh, uh, exhibition of the Roma uh, artists uh, there. And I didn't, pro I proposed things for the playground, but I was pushing to, to, to uh, exhibit the swallow's nest because for me that was, uh, how to say, more, uh, how to say, meaningful and to talk about an issue that it's more, it goes beyond just a, like a, a game. Okay, also the game is, you can talk about politics and so on, but this was like more, uh, how to say, going farther than uh, that. And they loved the idea. And they said that we were gonna talk uh, about this and they decided to exhibit it in the main venue of, uh, of uh, uh, 
Tritrianum in Castle. Uh, Tritrianum is the main venue, as you can see here, the main venue of uh, Documenta 15. And there I was exhibiting together in the venue, uh, with Dan Perjovsky, a very good artist from uh, Romania, and uh, um, Richard Bell from uh, Australia. It was in the other side. And as I said, in, but here it was different in, 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 in Kassel because all the questions that I was raising, uh, I, did, I was shouting on the facade of Friedrichianum, it was responded inside the museum. Because inside, uh, there were many drama artists, great artists, exhibiting uh, in the museum, in, uh, in uh, Documenta. And this work actually has been uh, also represented at Timisoara, European capital of culture, and also in, uh, in, uh, in Novi Sad in Serbia, and still continuing like to, to in also other other places. Um, we move uh, to another work, uh, which actually has a long research. Uh, you you can you can write, uh, read that uh, uh, the sentence I don't have borders to protect. I'm uh, not an English speaker, so. Um, I, they can be also, I have no borders to protect, but I started with this saying, like, I don't have borders to protect. Uh, actually, uh, for me, this sentence, uh, it's so intimate because it comes, it was conservated in our families, in Romani people. With or without our desire, we had to contribute to the national wars of our countries. And many, many the, according to the stories that I was asking my grandfathers, um, uh, they, how to say, they were saying that they were pushed or sometimes they were hiding the children to not to the, go to the wars. Why? They have to contribute to the country. But they were also not treated in the many situations, not treated as citizens of this country. That's why they were saying, why do we have to go to the war? And I explain you, like, also my, like, really personal uh, uh, perception about this sentence. And, but I go beyond this, and I, 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 I search about the word border. Uh, my father uh, opened the first Romani language school in Albania in 2005. My mother tongue is Romani. I learned Albanian at school. And I'm, I pretend I speak good Romani. <laughs> but, being activist and close to these uh, Roma scholars, having contacts. I did re this research with them about the word border by itself, but sometimes we are in academy university here. I don't trust too much scholars. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go beyond this, and I, I made a campaign uh, with um, a community, with people who live like in the periphery area, and to ask them, what does, like, do we have, or like, how do you say for the word border? All of them, all of them, they were referring to the other uh, 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 language, like borrowing the word border from the other languages. Like, for example, if I ask uh, the, my friends uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Serbia, they were saying, like, granica. Granica, it's uh, not, uh, uh, just, they were just romanizing it, but it's not a Romani word or the, uh, the, uh, the people who live in, uh, in, uh, like in English-speaking countries, still they don't have it. Although of those who were pretending that they knew the word, they didn't. So it came out, and all these opinions together, that the word border actually doesn't exist in our, in our, uh, our language. We have the, the concept of far, which means a gore, or like the end, and close, like it's pache, but not this concept of the line that divides things. So um, and that's why, um, but I still say that we are made out of borders, actually. Although like, like now, I have some kind of borders when I'm talking with you. And I have like to select the words and everything. And this sentence, and today's situation, actually what is happening uh, uh, with, with, with the wars, especially with the war in the Ukraine, actually made us more conscious about thinking about more about this sentence and uh, the way how we act with our neighbors and or how we treat the people in our countries and so on. And we found out that there was in the media uh, that a Roma guy from Ukraine, he took the tank 
I say took the tank and I'm strengthening it from the Russians and uh, by his tractor. And this went in the media. It went wider in the media and was saying that the Romani people stole the Russian tank. So instead of saying like they took the tank uh, from that as a contribution to, 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 to their country, to, to, to liberate their country, this is how we are perceived in the media. And this, this war actually shown us uh, the example that in, in the countries where we, are, we live, because Roma are contributing now, and they are now seen, because from the situation of discrimination and so on, the situation has turned into a positive way. And Roma are becoming heroes in the countries where, where, where they live. So, I mean, this is about, this work was exhibited in Autostrada Biennale in 2017. In, um, in Timisoara, in Berlin, and in Tirana. Uh, Tirana actually was a bit before. We continue still with, uh, with this concept of, of uh, how we sign territories, uh, uh, how we build relations with, uh, with each other, uh, interaction or the environment or the urbanization, architecture, and everything. This is a wo uh, work that I did it for, uh, there was this international exhibition that we have in Albania, it's called um, Onufri. Actually, it was the last edition. <laughs> and uh, there were many artists participating, like big names like Marina Abramovic, Yoko Ono, Boris, uh, the, the German artist. And um, I proposed this project because the concept was the reason of fragility and the relationship of the artist with the glass material. And um, for me, uh, it was very interesting because not only in Albania, but I found out that also in many other countries, uh, this kind of walls that are with the glass on top, you find it in, not only in Albania, but also in other country. And this for me is like paranoiac and it's so aggressive, so tense, like so uh, strong. And but here is the moment where the, the wall, for me, it fails totally. It fails totally, the, this, uh, the physical world. And uh, the, the, the tension goes, all the tension goes what is on top of the wall. So this, uh, the, this, this aggressive, this, uh, this glass that is there, the broken glass. And that's why I decided to, to strengthen it and put this nylon light on it and to fo give the focus o o only, only there because the people might uh, build the wall to, for uh, aesthetic, for protecting the area and so on. But this is also like sending messages. <laughs> it's like sending messages like you, know, you don't need to, to pass here. Like it's, you see very like fancy walls, you, like painted and so on. And then you put this, uh, which is looks in aesthetics. For some I find it beautiful, but for some I not find it beautiful. So. Uh, that's why, I mean, somehow I, I, I did this research and interview with people how, how do they act and how or where do they pay, put this wall in, in, in relation with their, with, their, with their neighbor and all this, all this uh, stuff. Uh, this is somehow kind of the last work uh, when it relates to this um, idea of um, uh, borders, lines, divisions, like dividing spaces and so on. But this is a bit more than that. Uh, the Floor is Yours is a work that I started uh, uh, as a research uh, for uh, the, resist uh, the Roma resistance during the Holocaust. I don't know how much do you know about the Roma resistance in Holocaust, but it was the only resistance that happened during the time of the Holocaust. And it was organized by the Romani people although it's so little spoken about that. So this work for me, it's another resistance that I do for, for that thing. I started to, to, to read materials. What it, it was very difficult actually to find materials uh, that talk about this resistance because this is also started very late as a, as a topic to, that people started to spoke and they started the uh, activists talking about this issue. And I found also like uh, in Tom Lantosh Institute, uh, 
uh, there is quite some materials about the world you find that how this residence uh, resistance uh, happened and how it was organized and how long did it last and um, uh, the Roma people they were close to the ch to the place Dr. Mengele was doing the experiments with the people uh, um, um, there uh, and uh, also Romani people are known known as um, how to say people with a high fertility and he was experimenting with this like with the twins especially and so on and uh, I wanted to talk about this resi uh, resistance but I was like having this um, internal um, the dilemma how what kind of shape I'm going to give it and what mater material I'm going to use it because there were like details in this research they were using like uh, improvised uh, weapons like uh, stones like uh, shovels or whatever they had uh, there but for me I wanted to give a shape uh, to to this so I went to, to a, uh, an area that uh, Roma community lives and actually they were forced evicted by the houses where they, they living before and they were in this transi transitory uh, center and I started to talk with them about how they build the baskets this way of baskets and if some of them and if they know about uh, this like the Romani resistance which they didn't know at all in the especially in the conditions that they, they were and um, I was finding two ways like to how to, to to build this work and from the discussion there, there were these guys that who were working with baskets, and I started to communicate with him that, can we do this with barbed wire? Because this was the most element that you find in Auschwitz, like uh, the with, like, very tense, creating this tense issue, situation. And uh, the guy told me that it's very difficult to do it. So he didn't uh, like, took it. And I said, okay, you will teach me to the process and I start to learn the process and I start to learn the process of doing this and together with the community there, we started to, uh, to, to build it. And I built this, uh, this work uh, 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 there together with the community, but it was very interesting, the discussion, because when I exhibited at, uh, uh, at the Mediterranean Biennale, I uh, had also the sound, the children that were talking just like uh, not uh, directed at all from me we're talking for different like uh, topics like food border or is is difficult or is dangerous to step there and so on and I install this inside this work so but as I said sometimes the work goes beyond our thought beyond our initial ideas and the, in this biennale the idea it was about the concept of borders which still, I mean, is like uh, like uh, there. So it is the somehow the first time that I uh, bring um, uh, a research, a topic, and talk uh, about uh, uh, this resistance uh, and giving the shape of a podium, the, of a lectern. Because for me, we don't have space about talking about uh, our history and our cultures. That's why I wanted to like to give to give it a, sh a shape that is uh, it symbolizes the 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 the, uh, the idea of, uh, of 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 speaking out about our 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 history, and I want to uh, I challenge myself actually. I'm I'm still looking for finding support to make another resistance with this work because I want to leave it. I, I, this work it doesn't has to belong to me. And I want to leave it in, uh, in Auschwitz, it is a place where everything started. And I want to make a walk with this work from Albania, from Tirana to, to Auschwitz, and to leave it there and say the floor is yours. So that still to continue with this idea of uh, asking, because I'm not doing just uh, a, like a visual art at the same, but in parallel, I'm also like uh, trying to negotiate about this institutionalization of our history and culture. So this is like the, um, the, the future project that I'm going to do with this work. I'm still uh, like working with uh, 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 finding the ways how we can uh, bring it to, to, to Auschwitz because that needs stuff. Now we change a bit, go a bit out from the concept of borders because we, we talked a lot about that. Uh, we, talk, uh, uh, we are now somehow going to these uh, social issues. Uh, in 2000, 
2013, I started uh, to make a group of souvenirs to support, to create a scholarship for the, uh, for the students. Because I, I was like somehow fed up with the idea of uh, just waiting from others, from donors and so on. And I said that what we can do for our people to, 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 to support with the, with the studying. And, but sometimes not everything that we initiate is, uh, succeeds. I have more spent for this uh, thing than uh, I generated uh, for, for, for the students. But it was the situation of housing in Albania, not only in Albania, actually, but every, in many countries in Europe about the first eviction of Roma. And in Albania, there was this urbanization to make the new big ring roads. And there were many Roma who were first evicted uh, uh, from their house, and they left in the, walk where you were, in the street. So they didn't have anywhere to stay. But this work somehow came out to me, spoke to me, because it was part of these small, tiny souvenirs that I have created. And we were organizing uh, protests, like uh, uh, meetings about this uh, issue with the Roma activists, that they have a very great contribution about the very young people, a great contribution to find a solution for these families. And I decided. Again, because the protests that they're organizing uh, there, Albania is a small country. It's like two, two million and a half, something like that. And these, day, these days, we just started the new census. And um, uh, it's a bit difficult there with the protests, because they, if you organize a protest, someone from the politics will come, and the chaos goes down. Because they will say this is politics, and the the other party has its own interest, and there is nothing. So that's why I invited now the community involving. I invited the members from the community who were attached by uh, this uh, this issue from the first eviction. Actually, I invited also other activists to be to to support, and to come together to me to do the same thing that I did in 2013 where I blocked the entrance of the Albanian parliament, but this time I wanted to block the, entry, uh, the, the door, the entrance of the door of the prime minister office. Although I support him, uh, he is also an artist. I support him uh, like as, as, uh, as a prime minister, as an artist, and so on. But I have a lot of criticism at the same time <laughs> about the way how things are done. Because we uh, totally agree that with the developments, with the new urbanization, and so on, but first, because this is everything about humans. So we first find solution for humans, and then we do this infrastructural regulation. And uh, the community came with me, and we, the police actually didn't allow us to, to throw these um, houses and to block the, the door of the prime minister's office, but they, we throw them uh, on the thing that you walk. Sideway. Yeah, sideway. And, um, there was, by coincidence, what was the same police that was in the parliament that said, you, you again here. So, <laughs> so um, I didn't say to the community what they would do. We were just like, for the initial idea, just to go and through the houses there. But they started, actually, to create areas. To create areas like urbanization areas, how they see the area where they live uh, in the... The, like they dream houses and how that would be organized. And many people took, because there were 2,500 houses, uh, like s tiny houses in, in a plaster material. And uh, uh, they started to organize these uh, areas, and many of, uh, of the people who were passing by took it. But for me, this was very important, because when they took the houses, there was an ex explanation about what, that. Unconsciously, unconsciously, they were doing dislocation. <laughs> Although, I mean, it was somehow, because sometimes decisions that we make, uh, although we think that it's good, or, uh, but unconsciously, sometimes we might uh, cause problems from, uh, from, for, for other people's uh, life. And this work also has been exhibited in many places in Europe and different forms. It was produced as a candy 
so people took it uh, from the map and uh, uh, consumed it. It was as a, as a candle when I did a, 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 a performance about the people for, for about the immigration and this forced eviction in the Netherlands. So we Romani people actually don't have a land, a territory. Um, and also is the stereotype that we cannot stand in one place. But I have a response for that. We couldn't stand in one place because we were pushed from a place to another one. So what we did, we got, just got used to the, to the uh, options that we had. So from moving to a place to, an, and to another. And there is also this stereotype that people don't want to, to have a land. They, we are not identified as a land, although, although our origin is India. And in 2018, actually, for the first time in the history, uh, the foreign minister of India accepted Romani people as the Indian diaspora. And she thanked also, actually, that we always mentioned in our uh, like, uh, public speaking and life our origin that it was India. But India didn't like, uh, accept. So it was just because it was 2018, it was the thousand years that Roma left India and came to Europe. But this work is inspired by um, a Romani scholar, sociologue, George Nicolai. And for me, he is like an avant-garde in the Roma movement from Romania. He talks about, uh, uh, together with some other scholars, about the concept of, a, uh, and the book is titled, From the Victimhood to the Citizenship. And this, for me, is very interesting and beautiful. Uh, because we Roma have been treated always as victims. Because of this, we also victimized and somehow start to believe this uh, concept and so on vi and victimized ourselves uh, but he changes totally the, the like this kind of provocation changes totally the the way of thinking about ourselves and um, what i do i do just a simple action because he talks about the notion of romani land Roma. And uh, in the first World Romani Congress in 71, they were supposed to talk about a Roma, Roma land, a Roma territory. But I don't know what happened because some, I was uh, like, no one could explain exactly what was. Faik Abdi, for example, uh, first Roma MEP from uh, Macedonia, he was going to, um, to suggest this idea of uh, Roma, uh, uh, Romani land, Roma state, country in the first Congress, but he didn't. And he was like thinking about Shutka, which is a very small municipality that was created thanks, sometimes thanks, to the earthquake that happened in, uh, in Macedonia. Uh, and all the Roma, uh, because they were living in the center, city center, they were, all the Roma were like sent to the periphery. And this, uh, this periphery became a municipality, is the biggest number that is Roma, uh, with the Roma there. So didn't they, they were not allowed to talk about this. And it was about someone like freaking to talk about this concept. But for me, uh, it's the, the notion or the concept of territory of, uh, of uh, Romani land, because I write in the Romani uh, language, Romani poop, and I strengthen it. I write it with uh, two R. And um, for me, George Nicolai talks about the virtual Romani land the coming together, the communication that we are, because, and here is like my, how to say, my contribution, um, our land, our Romani land, is the places where we live. Because we have contributed, protected those countries where we live, and that's our Romani land. And um, uh, I write it with a special mud that is, uh, considered the purest mud in the Romani culture. And it has a beautiful name. It's called Shishik. <laughs> and I love it when I say it. Uh, this, this mud, uh, Romani people were using it for cleaning themselves, uh, as a powder for the children. And sometimes pregnant women used to consume it dur during their pregnancy. So that's why I write it. I choose this material because 
when we think about territory, there is a lot of history, a lot of fights and everything and so on. So um, I wanted to find something that is very pure, very clean. And this was the thing that for me uh, would help me in my action that I, I, was, uh, I wanted to do. I'm not a video artist, but you can see this also, you find it also in the internet, this work. I'm not a video artist, but I document the acts that, uh, the, uh, that I do. So that's why I write this Romani Poop to talk about this concept of gathering, togetherness, and networking uh, with each other that George Nicolai was talking about, but no one understood him. So they misunderstood him about that he was talking about a notion that because we are spread everywhere in Europe, it's, we just need like to be represented in the countries where we are because we are the citizens of those countries where we are. My Linda is a modified bus, motor bicycle. I'm talking. I'm not re taking references from uh, uh, from other artists and so on because I think it's the best way to to, to show the works that I do. That's why I decided to to not go to to philosophies and to jump like that, but better to to show the practice that I I, I follow. Um, this uh, modified motor bicycle has contributed a lot to the economy and also to the environment. The Romani people actually in Albania are like the mostly uh, the ones who work with recycling, collecting recycling materials and so on. And uh, in some years ago, this motorbike, uh, it was forbidden to move in the city. And there were many cases about um, um, uh, when they sometimes they, they even beaten the, the guys who were taking the materials that they collected, beaten the guys who were collecting this. Uh, motorbike, but as I said, it's like the, the the community that has contributed the most when it comes to recycling and to, to the envi environment in Albania. Uh, what I do, because uh, it's you know it's it's too much. No one listens to us. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to rush. <laughs> no one listens to us uh, when it comes to these uh, papers and so on. I I took this. I wanted to turn it in a souvenir in the souvenir uh, that I could offer it to the system, that how the system would react this, with this object when this object is not anymore uh, with the same play, uh, shapes, or like a, how to say the garbage or materials, but it's painted. And because the, the, the argument is like they, they change the aesthetics of the city and so on. So that's why I decided to paint it with this floral and the uh, 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 motifs, uh, the, the motor bicycles. So, and I offer it to the system that how the system would, would uh, act with, uh, with it. And I call it my Linda for the simple reason because we always name things. Uh, the, when I asked the guy what is the name, he said my Linda. And my Linda was the first animal that we had at home as well. Um, the Garden of Eden and the Eel Line, it's a project that actually brought me in New York. It is the work that I participated in Ardia Award I, in 2022, where I write in Romani language. I, I would read it in Romani language and then in English. O miri pub so guli kai sinan, dav tut morav, yek dive kai rinav tuke sa solilom tutar. O ruka, o luludia, e jivutren, o shujopai, e sa so tire miri pub. We have also the English. Oh my land, how sweet you are. I promise that one day I will return all that I took from you. Trees, flowers, animals, birds, clear water, and everything that belongs to you, my land. This is a promise that I did, actually. And this is written with fruit seeds that I collected. And you will see why. It's a promise that I did uh, for myself and to the land. Because we artists, we don't have economical stability. And I wanted to create economical stability for myself, but I also come from a village that has a lot of problems with the, the, the employment and economies and so on. And uh, I, together with my wife, we wanted to create uh, this uh, forest 
that we could contribute to the environment. We started first with a poplar tree, where I planted 1,000 poplar tree that was destroyed because this was in a land that I own, it was far. And then I decided to redo it again, but this time to do it with free trees that we could create possibility to generate incomes, to employ the women in the village, but because for them it was very difficult to get uh, possibility for employment and to produce jam and everything. So th and I, made, I didn't have money to, to make this work. I decided to make campaigns to collect seeds and these seeds I was planting them in my home in the balcony and uh, after they grew in a certain stage I sent them to the village and planting uh, them. But before, beside this, Romani people are uh, known uh, 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 as the people who have contributed to this herbalism, like uh, identifying herbs. And my family actually for years, but for many years, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, worked with this idea of collecting uh, herbs and, uh, uh, and created a good system for uh, employment in, in the village and they sell these, these herbs. And to link why I, I, I make, uh, make this, because in this installation, I, uh, the, the, the forest that I built it is, is, uh, in, uh, is close to a river that is contaminated. And that's why sometimes that whatever we do as individuals, but not everything belongs to us, because somewhere far away from us, someone is doing pollution. So, and we raised like this issue always about the, the, the local government and so on to talk about this. The, the land was not contaminated directly, but from the air, because it's down the river, was somehow the, from the smell contaminated. So, but in this, causes a lot of long problems for the people and they had to take medicines and those people who take medicines they collect herbs so the herbs that they collect and like sell them to create this economy so it's like coming back again to them so that's why i i decided in this installation to not bring the bad smell of the river but yes I will, yeah, I will wrap it up. So if anybody needs to leave, please do so quietly, but uh, say I'm going to continue on. Thank yeah, you. okay. And uh, I, I put inside this installation the aroma of lavender so that I could leave the smell uh, uh, in the gallery of uh, the, the good smell, the smell of the future in the, in the institution. Shall I continue? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this, this work is called Baltosie, which uh, mudding. Uh, it comes from, uh, 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 in Albanian politics, the word Baltosie is articulated always. Like uh, uh, putting mud on me, like making me dirty. And in this context, this is related uh, with me, like personally, because as you saw from my work, that this, the focus of the, to be part of decision making processes. Uh, I, uh, now I am inside the, the system and I had always this internal fight with myself of uh, what happens now that I'm inside the system. This is what I was looking for. So what will happen now? I got the, the position in the first year I wanted to leave. Uh, I, I had a lot like a serious uh, problem. I was talking with my friends and families and so on. And I was like almost to leave the position. I mean, there was a, such a big fight, I mean, to like to, to, to get to the system. And then it come a stage that you want to leave. Uh, because in the civil society, things are moving a bit more faster. And in this decision, there is a lot of bureaucracy and you have to wait to continue all these structural things. And, um, but also sometimes when you enter it into the system, say to you that look you are not any more activist but you are like a now public servant so there are things change now so it was the question do I have to adapt to the system or do I have to continue what I was fighting for because it's not enough that to be one person there in the system that cannot change nothing so I invited my mother 
and uh, women from the Roma village with the same mud that I already explained to come to my office and to, to, to mud, like to, to put mud on me, to cover me with mud. But in this contest, not in a sense that they make me dirty, but they put a mantle for me that would pre uh, like, uh, protect me of becoming dirty. So this is the moment where I decided to not leave the position because I was like one year, I was like raising like uh, ideas, all the ideas falling down and so on and so on and so on. I said, I'm not used to like come and just sit, keep the chair. Because vice chairs, somehow only when they give you something to do and then you work. I said, I want to do something. So that's why I started then uh, to confront and to uh, because the, our institution didn't have a, uh, had a, uh, like a process of need assessment, didn't have the strategy. And I started to, to collaborate with the contacts that I have, for example, with the Council of Europe, to, to, to ask their help to help us with the expert to make the uh, need assessment of the institution. And then to, uh, uh, again, to help us with expert to make the strategy of the institution. The strategy, the need assessment is done. The strategy is done the, of the institution and is now uh, getting approval. And beside this, because the institution didn't have ways to organize activities, I open a gallery, which is called Parking Art Gallery. You can find it also in Instagram. And this gallery is for giving a space, alternative space, uh, space for all the artists that belong to all the national minorities, but not only. So it's a space for all uh, that they can exhibit there and so on. At the same time, this, this space serves as a tool to promote the institution because we always had the, the difficulties that uh, the people uh, couldn't recognize, or didn't know the institution, they're mixing it with uh, organizations and so on. So in one year and a half, the, the visibility of the institution it went very high. For example, one, in one opening, for example, in that we do, let, there are like uh, 100 to 115 uh, visitors who come uh, to visit the, the gallery. I don't know how much time we have, but I would like to, uh, uh, after thanking you for the uh, attention, I would like also if y you agree to, sh you can see the video of, of the work uh, by Tosia that to have like a feeling what I'm, I'm talking about, that said uh, the process and how how these, uh, they made me the, uh, as a sculpture. So thanks everyone. So now we can see the video and then we can uh, after that open it for questions.
Yeah. But that depends on the countries uh, where, where, where you are, but also the, uh, the gr what, who are the people that you want to communicate. For example, my work is related to the community uh, uh, sometimes, and I have to go in person, for example, there, because uh, many of them don't use the emails. Uh, but, uh, and, but with the others, of course, emails are like uh, this kind of official uh, way of communication. the most difficult or challenging aspect? Oh, I, I, I can, I, I'm not sure if I can have like a like very clear answer about it, to be honest, but uh, it depends what media. is to work with technology, new media, and so on. And when it comes to the traditional way, like painting and so on, uh, like a sculpture, like, uh, I don't know, or video, I, that's more easy. But to, uh, like to, today, it's more this uh, uh, technological, uh, new media interventions. Because uh, when it comes to traditional, I don't see it like a, The process, ah, oh, I, yeah, yeah, okay, no. I, uh, okay, I got it. Usually in my practice, actually, uh, I start, uh, I, I do research always. There is no work uh, that starts without a research because I can have an, uh, like an idea in my head to create a work, but just to start creating uh, without doing a research, the, uh, the idea will not mature will not come somehow in a, in a clear way, even for, for myself, because that will be very difficult to explain it to, to the others or the shape that you want to give. So you see all of, all of the works that uh, I presented here, they are like very deep research, like research, like, uh, uh, like desk research, field research, uh, interviewing with uh, the, the people and communicating, sharing with, uh, with uh, uh, artists, like uh, talking about the idea, how to develop it and so on. But mostly I think that what helps in um, creating one work is we have to take it like seriously and to make a research. And it's not just like you given, because the execution, it's l uh, the last part of, of, of the work. Today you have many artists who even don't touch their work. <laughs> so there are there many companies, Yoko Ono, when she, uh, we had the exhibition in, in, in Tirana, there was a company from Italy that where she did the, the shot. It was this work with the shot the, that they exhibited there. So, yeah. is a mixture. <laughs> it's a mixture because I started, I finished Art Academy in Tirana in 2010. And then I went in Budapest I in Hungary. I started in a Roma English language program. After that, I did Academy of Political Studies. So that's why it's a mixture of activism, po politics, and arts. Yes. I've been, my mother is scared to go back to Europe because, or to visit Europe because Hungary has gotten bad at that. But um, as far as like politically, your journey like in advocating for Roma people in um, specifically Albania, 
has like your artwork, or would you recommend it, like using your artwork in demonstration as like a way for other Roma people, as, like, as for example in Hungary or some places that might not be still are, the situation might be getting worse. Would you recommend them to take that sim a similar route, or I apologize? Yeah, yeah, sure. I brought some gift from the university here. And actually, this comes from Hungary. Uh, I'm happy to see you here. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, I, I, uh, when I was in, Bu in Budapest, I had a huge uh, debate, and huge debate with uh, my, uh, the, my teachers, like the pedagogues, but also my classmates, and the Roma themselves, uh, uh, actually. The discussion, it was about the terminology. For me, it was shocking that to use gypsies, like the terminology about ourselves, when we identify ourselves as Roma. Also, when we ask each other, what are you? We are Roma in our language. I don't know if you know some words in, in Romani. <laughs> anyway, and uh, as a response to my friends, to my fellow Roma, I invited them to help me to identify Roma famous people, intellectuals, activists, writers, poets, politicians, and so on. And I said to them, you identify them, and I draw them. So they identify many Roma people and activists, and I draw them together, like 29 portraits that are here. And uh, I, I did an exhibition as a response to all of that in the in CU, in Budapest, in the university. And uh, but. There are many good artists in, uh, from Hungary who are like working with that. I know that the situation with because of Orban is like uh, you know even CU it had moved from uh, Hungary to to there, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that is not safe. Uh, uh, like a very like critical uh, because people we have a, a still our friends that who live there and who are doing a great job and also great artists that we exhibited together are continuing. Um, I recommend this because I strongly believe in art that ma can make changes. So I, I that's why I'm continuing to to use to use it as the, my 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 most powerful language. In, in when I react, uh, interact with people, institutions, and so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you have a favorite art piece of them? I have many. I, I mentioned the swallow's nest, the tiny house, the, this small house that I have, but also Baltosie that. Uh, it's I, for artists, you know, when you ask uh, like uh, which favorite, you cannot divide it. But how to say? Um, maybe because of the work that is somehow going more, traveling more. Maybe you feel attached to to that. I don't know. Yeah. Can you also tell us more about this new project you're embarking on with uh, the visual, the, you know, studying? Yes. Visual uh, currently, actually, I didn't include it here because uh, would that be, I, I didn't want it to overload you, like to give t too much uh, things so you could, I mean, that was a kind of, <laughs> but still. Uh, uh, in 2018, I started the research in the film archives in Albania. I started with Albania, but I want to go beyond that. Uh, how Romani people are featured in the cinematography. And uh, I collect materials uh, from the movies. I identify a lot of movies uh, that they are featured. And at the same time, in parallel, I'm, uh, I'm collecting materials how the Roma themselves have documented their life, like in daily life, every, like from ceremony, weddings, uh, work uh, moments, and so on. And I start to collect them and to draw them and put them together uh, with those. So, I don't say nothing that to people how they would see us, but I just offer them how we are featured and how our real life it is. And I found out in, in many of the movies actually that how ridiculously or seriously the movie directed, uh, directors have taken the roles and to represent uh, uh, like uh, the, the Roma. One of them is they pretend they speak Romani uh, uh, in one uh, scene there. And they say that Luku Luku Babashta, and my friends in my high school, they were like playing with this, saying that they knew that I was Roma, 
and they're saying this sentence from the movie, and they're waiting reaction from me. I said, I don't understand it. I don't understand what this sentence means. So this is how seriously we are taken in the, like, uh, to, to be featured in the cin cinematography. And this, this work actually, I'm, I'm still continuing. I have made a small presentation in one exhibition that I had in New York here. Uh, I will do like, it will be, this will be in painting, but also like uh, uh, materials and, uh, and uh, installation as well. And approximately it will be like uh, from 60 to 70 paintings and materials and installations. But this is the, the, like the main project that I'm going to focus when I go back in, uh, in, uh, in Albania, beside the activism and politics and <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I wanted to say one last thing. Actually, this is a gift for my mother because today she has the, her birthday, so I want to wish her a happy birthday. I'm not uh, there with her, but I, I called her in the morning that I wished her to a happy birthday. So she was also one of the women. Tell her we wish her happy birthday from Texas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Lilia? Uh -huh. I know the guys have to get the microphones. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Thank these are so for much. the university. Thank you. So <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's so great to see your, your body of work and <laughs> where you come from. Very nice. And I know that um, Brandy's going to take you and you're going to go do your studio visits. So I yeah. hope you have a great time. Yeah. You'll be in good hands with the grad students. Thank you. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it.